All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Meredith, for the introduction. So my challenge here is to try to explain the differences between these programs. This is a talk I've given at Swine Day, but I was given 40 minutes, so we're going to try to squeeze her down into 10. So we're going to give a very superficial and hopefully answer any questions. There's a lot of resources. We're going to try to give you some website links. If you have more questions, feel free to ask during the panel or come up and talk to me afterwards. So just to kind of focus, circle back, you know, why is ASF? We're going to use ASF, all of this would account for any of the foreign animal diseases that we would deal with. Uh, we've heard from our panel speakers this morning, you know, the identification of ASF is going to stop trade. It's going to halt trade. You know, that's 25 to 30 percent of the pigs that we produce. Uh, <clears throat> our response here in the U.S., it's going to lead to a complete halt, a temporary halt of animal movements. Could include feed and rendering as well. So, you know, they talk about 72 hours, highly likely, depending on the extent of the initial infection and investigation, it could be longer than that. Um, and with some potential quarantine and removal of the infected animals. And we have no vaccine available today, some promising research, but we're probably still three to five years away from something that we could use here today. So this all leads us to, which is really to say, what can we be doing now today to get ready for this? And really, this is something uh, that's really paramount to, to be able to discuss and be thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis, because you don't want to start your FAD preparation after the event. It's really going to be too late. That's really one of the things I want to make sure that you walk out here with today. So there's lots of different programs out there, and we've had a lot of questions. Uh, uh, fielded back, you know, to IPPA, to, uh, to the Iowa Pork Industry Center. So what are each of these programs? How do they work together? So I'm going to try to differentiate some of these and try to give you a couple of slides and hopefully give you a couple of takeaways. This certainly would be one of them. I hope that you walk out of here with the, today. So what you see is uh, here is just kind of a graphical representation of the different programs in, uh, in an outbreak. Let's say the outbreak is confined to a single site. So how are some of these program is going to look a little bit different. So what you see here is you've got the infected site, you're going to have an infected zone, you're going to have a, a buffer zone, a surveillance zone around that, that whole area there. You can see delineated by the outer circle is going to be the control area, okay? So what you're going to have right in the middle, the infected site, they're going to get a whole lot of help from the USDA and the state vet's office, okay? So there's already, there's a red book, you know, there's a response plan, all that's going to be uh, you know, you're going to have, as a producer, you're going to have a lot of help from uh, USDA and the state vet's office on that. There's a plan for that already, although a lot of this prep plan is really going to help uh, help you as a producer and really help the industry in, in kind of determining, helping to determine the investigation and the length of that, uh, the uh, uh, temporary shutdown. So. That's, that's kind of all taken care of there. Now, anybody who's within that control area, that's where you see the secure pork supply plan, right? So if you're in that area, you're going to uh, certainly, you're going to have a temporary quarantine. You're going to have a lot of temp, uh, surveillance and testing. You may be in, uh, not infected, but you may be, you're going to be affected because you're in that control zone, right? So that's where the secure pork supply plan uh, you know, and there's been a lot of preparation that's been done in that area. That's kind of where that, those farms, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, FAD prep planning, particularly 2018 and 2019. You know, a lot of people got their maps together for that. That's kind of where that kind of all fits, fits in there. And then we're going to talk to you about a newer program. Jordan talked a little bit of the U.S. Swine Health uh, Improvement Plan. That's kind of for the rest of us, right? That's for everybody else that are not involved in any of those control disease control areas. That's for everybody else in the disease control area. So that's really kind of how you think about the differentiation of that. And what we're going to talk about today is we think about ag view, secure pork supply plan. We're going to talk about certified sampling. They're all tools, tools in your toolbox to help you get prepared. The nice thing about SHIP is SHIP is really a program, and you kind of saw a little bit of that in Jordan's talk about uh, SHIP is going to be talking about prevention and centering on, uh, you know, what can we do to prove that uh, the sites that are outside the control zone, that we can demonstrate freedom from disease. So you can see a lot of effort that Jordan and his team are leading about what can we do from a feed and feed biosecurity standpoint. So we'll go into more detail on that. But if you really look at, when you compare those different programs, there's a lot of fundamentals among those programs. And you saw Jordan's slide. 
All those programs really talk about traceability, biosecurity, surveillance. You're going to see those themes really repeat as we kind of go through the slides here and, and you go between those three programs. So secure pork supply, you probably saw in Jordan's presentation that's heavily done on having a good site biosecurity plan. So a lot of producers did that 2018, 2019. We weren't sure as part of the permitting process if, if everyone was going to have to have a completed biosecurity plan. One of the resolutions that the latest ship House of Delegates, because so many people had indeed had a, a, a enhanced biosecurity plan completed, uh, that uh, was one of the standards that was recently uh, um, voted on and voted into the ship program. So. Um, <clears throat> that's an excellent tool. If you don't have an enhanced biosecurity plan, going through using the secure pork supply uh, a plan will do a great job of helping you develop that site plan and the map uh, for that. It does a great job of talking you through and helping you define for your farm uh, the you know, line of separation, the perimeter buffer area, you know, kind of covering those specific areas. So excellent job if you haven't done that already. A more recent development within that, I think as we understood it, depending on if the initial outbreak is going to involve lots of control areas, is it's going to be difficult and we probably don't have the, the veterinary power to be able to um, get in there and do all the testing that may be required, particularly for those farms that would be in, not infected, but in those control areas because they're going to need to have routine testing to, to get their movement permits. So the collaboration uh, between uh, the National Pork Board, the Swine Medicine Education Center, and USDA is to develop this certified swine sample collector. So another step in the FAD preparation is to really develop this program where we can train people on the farms under the guidance of the Category 2 veterinarian to go ahead and collect the samples and then submit them on behalf of the Category 2 veterinarian. So this program is being put together and has been launched this year. And it's a standard, standardized curriculum that, uh, that the trainers at uh, the Swine Medicine Education Center have put together. There's a classroom portion and then there's a hands-on portion to that, that you can go ahead, the Category 2 veterinarians can go ahead and get employees signed up on the farm. So in the event that you have to, you are, you find up that your farm is in a control area and you need to get uh, your animal sampled to be able to get movement permits, you can have people on your farm that are certified to go ahead and do that. So there's a lot of information on there. So once again, securepork.org uh, has all that information. They have some excellent resources on there. And so much so if you need to teach somebody how to bleed, for, and we don't have, obviously we don't have a foreign animal disease today. They're excellent resources. You can tap into all those resources today at securepork.org. AgView, AgView is a, a fantastic free piece of software developed by National Pork Board. Uh, really is a, a, a good way if you don't have uh, traceability, uh, an automated traceability system. It's a place where you can store your movements, you can store your sites on there. You can see it, it, uh, sec it securely hold. For U.S. producers, you can put all your information, put your site data, you put your movement data in there. You, you can go ahead and release that only at your request if a state animal health official. Once again, this is in the event that you know, we get into the situation where we have a first case and, and the uh, state vets and the USDA are trying to find potential and dangerous contacts, having all that information, having it digital, digitized and being able to get that information out rapidly is going to help shorten that the standstill movement window. So another very, very important piece, if you want to learn more about that software, it's at porkcheckoff.org slash agview. Some cool things about that, you can put all your movement information in there, you can quickly highlight, it's got mapping features on there, it can show you all the movements because you have all your information in there, all the GPS coordinates. So go ahead, if, if you don't have your movement records into some digitized format, signing up for an AgView account is a very important piece of FAD preparation. Last thing we're going to talk about today is give you a little bit more background on the U.S. Uh, Swine Health Improvement Plan, and it was really modeled after the National Poultry Improvement Plan. And I want to just spend a, a slide talking to you about why that is and why that's important. The neat thing about this program is it's not a government program, it's not a producer program, it is a industry, state, and federal partnership. And, and really that's a significant portion of that. That's why that's such a strong program. It's all those entities working together. And some of the biggest advantages of that is the ability of that program, which was established in 1935, so that program has been functioning almost 80 years. 
And some of the primary goals of that is to sustain export markets and ongoing interstate commerce uh, in unaffected states and regions during, during a, uh, a disease event. And, then, and one of the very important pieces of that is demonstration of the freedom of disease outside of trade impacting control areas, right? So that seems like one thing that we would see if we have a case or two and we have a couple of control areas. How do we want to be able to talk to our partners and have a program like U.S. SHIP to say, yep, okay, we've got these animals in these control areas, but everybody else is signed up under U.S. SHIP. Here's all the standards and all the biosecurity, all the traceability, and all the surveillance pieces that are in place that we can demonstrate that all the rest of these sites, uh, you know, are free from the disease and we're still able to go ahead and export those um, product from those, uh, from those farms. And a really great example of that was high path avian influenza. In 2015, we had the first wave of that, 60 countries uh, banned poultry from the U.S., but in the most recent one, only two countries did. And I think that speaks to the value of a program like that and the maturity. And what we would hope to see as the Swine Health Improvement Plan would get mature, we would see something similar to that, right? As the trading partners understand everything that gets involved with the U.S. SHIP program, they can say, oh, okay, so here's all the standards that go into the U.S. SHIP program for farms that are outside of those trade impacting control areas. The, thing, the other thing that's really important about that, the participation in that program, it is voluntary, but for it to really be important, or to really to be impactful, it has to be universal, and that's what they've seen in the poultry industry. So that's really going to be our other charge, uh, and uh, really in, over the next few years here is to get that, uh, if we're going to model it, is to be the same, is to get people signed up here to U.S. SHIP program. So like we say, you know, what are some of the benefits? Increase our preparedness and prevention. For sure, you know, and Jordan talked about the areas that we're working on there, but if we do get a case, to focus on rapid response and rapid recovery. You know, there certainly would be advantages if we get to the point with some endemic diseases where we want to talk about, uh, you know, uh, linking, uh, improve, doing improvements through biosecurity, mitigating some of our endemic diseases. A program like that would make a lot of sense. And then certainly, you know, anything about focusing, you see this repeating theme of focusing on prevention and demonstrating of uh, freedom of disease outside of control areas, particularly to, for interstate commerce and then also to our trading partners as well. So if you think about it, if, uh, if I try to summarize in one slide what are the differences, this would probably be the take-home one, right? So we talk about all these tools that we have. We have AgView for traceability. We've got biosecurity. We've got secure pork supply. We've got sampling and testing. We've got, you know, certified sampler program. Those are all tools that we have in our toolbox. The nice thing about U.S. SHIP is that's a program where we utilize all those tools into a program that states would hopefully recognize and our trading partners as well. That becomes a program that we can use. And once again, all focus on prevention and demonstration of freedom of disease outside of control areas. If we look at uh, the participation map uh, of this program, we've got a total of about 31 states that have committed and another three that are interested. So 34 states that are interested uh, in or have committed to participate that represent uh, more than 99% of the U.S. domestic swine. What are some of the requirements so far? It's pretty simple stuff, you know, no, uh, no garbage and swill feeding, a current and active VCPR with your veterinarian, you have to have premise ID information, keep live, live animal movement records and practice sharing with your official state agency, have a bi site biosecurity plan, international visitors observe five days downtime, uh, no sampling and uh, testing requirements uh, here yet in the first couple of years. So all pretty simple stuff. Enrollment forms, you do that through your official state agency. There's the website for Iowa. You can either do a single site or if you have multiple site, they have all those forms there. If, uh, if you're from a state that doesn't have, that isn't listed there, you can go to the U.S. Swine Health Improvement Plan. If you Google that, it'll get to the website. They have the contact information for the official state agencies of all the states that are participating. Where are we at with enrollment so far? Uh, we've had a really good start, really started in, uh, enrollment at the beginning of 2022, and we're kind of currently sitting at about 48% of the breeding herd in the U.S. are enrolled, and about 42% of the uh, growing herd. So kind of final slide, what can you do today? What are the kind of the steps? First and foremost, I think it's really to get you enrolled in U.S. SHIP. We said 
participation is voluntary, but it's really got to get to be universal for that program to really, really work. So contact your official state agency. If you don't have a site biosecurity plan, go to securepork.org. It's got templates to help you complete a site-specific plan. If you don't have a uh, computerized way <clears throat> to um, uh, track your movement records or your sites, you can create an AgView account, porkcheckoff.org, AgView. Verify your PIN and your tracking movements. And by, to improve your on-farm surveillance, there's uh, information in securepork.org. Or you can also get certified uh, to be a sample collector, work with your veterinarian uh, to make sure you at least have a person or two on your farms to go through the certified sample collector training. And I'll go ahead with that. I'll thank the people, my uh, collaborators, to help put the slides together, and we'll take questions at the panel.